I call myself a self-custody maximalist. When you only have it on exchange, you understand the number graph technology, but not the freedom graph technology. You might yeah. get rug pulled, you might get something like an FTX. It's so easy to get hacked. We all know that from previous experience, like the FTX, they can easily store your coins into other place. So the only way to solve these problems is you keep it on your own hand. Most users on the Bitcoin blockchain have their Bitcoin in an exchange with a custodian, but the yeah. most Bitcoin like is actually in self-custody. Get the coins out of the exchange and to your own wallet. I'm a Bitcoiner. I only have Bitcoin. I do not have any altcoins on my hand. How does a uh, hardware wallet actually work? Uh, first thing that I want to cover is like always like, especially you are also on the founder team and the founders are always unique because they have like a reason why they do something like they they have a reason why they start something why did you and uh, your colleagues uh, start keystone wallet like how did you get motivated to like okay we have to do something did you see something that was missing on the market or like why did you get started with keystone uh Okay, so I think it's a long story, and we can I, I can try to uh, explain more details about how we start Keystone and how the whole thing started. I think uh, the story what can be started is uh, when I first uh, when I first learned about Bitcoin. So mm -hmm. I, um, I I think that time is uh, two thousand and seventeen. I just read the um, white paper of, uh, of the Bitcoin, of what Satoshi writes. And really, I see that really shocked, uh, shocked me. So uh, previously, I uh, I have never, I uh, actually, I have never thought about uh, the, uh, the, the cryptocurrencies or there is the um, uh, uh, cryptocurrencies can actually work. Because you can, it can be easy. Uh, if, if the it's uh, digital stuff, it can be easily coded. So how mm -hmm. to um, make that happen? So uh, what Satoshi did, and of when I first read the uh, white paper, I I, I just um, spent I, I think one week or two weeks to um, to go through every details about uh, about each part of the Bitcoin and. And the uh, like the UTSO stuff, like the um, POW, and these kind of things, combine them all, it can just work. And that is really uh, shocked me. So uh, from from that time, I would like to uh, to jump into the rabbit hole. And so uh, just seeking the opportunities and seeking uh, the how I can enter this place. Because previously I was a software engineer, which is work like the big companies like the IBM and like the uh, SolidWorks, which is our uh, so uh, software agency, uh, a software consulting agency. So I build a, a bunch of these uh, software systems. I know how to uh, code, and at that time I just want to uh, build something cool the uh, Bitcoin stuff so um, after like two or three months I found uh, which is uh, my last company called Kobo and and um, he uh, it will willing to build a uh, um, software uh, wallet company so uh, which is can um, green match better user uh, user experience to the users. So I think that is the my enter into this space. So when I joined the company I made my um my uh my, my teammate and made uh my uh partner which is Li Xin, the CEO of Keystone Wallet. So we start uh working together to build something uh to build uh, something to get together. At that time we thinking that um because previously we have some experiences on the both on the software part and hardware part, and when I uh, when we just enter this space and uh, want to see how we can combine our uh, uh, our strengths, our uh, 
capacities to uh, this world. So we think the hardware wallet is a really good, uh, really good point to uh, enter the uh, enter the uh, enter the uh, Bitcoin space. So uh, that is why we uh, so for the Keystone, the first three years we named as Cobalt. Wallet. Uh, so we were really focused on the Bitcoin community and to contribute our uh, efforts to build like a uh, uh, really easy to use and easy to um, uh, easy to manage uh, hardware wallet to the average users. So back to uh, that period of time, I think in the market there are, there is uh, the hardware wallet is really hard to use. So no matter if you use uh, use a uh, Trezor or Ledger device or use uh, use uh, 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 other devices, it will have our uh, it always have the very little screen, which is you can cannot get quite uh, the idea about uh, how the transaction goes and compare. And we think that if the hardware wallet is acts like this, it is really hard for the average users to enter the Bitcoin community to manage their coins by themselves. So uh, either that time, we uh, we think we would like to provide a hardware wallet, which is quite like the um, like your phones. So user do not, every user do not uh, have to learn a lot to, uh, to, to figure out how to use that. They can just um, use their previously uh, previously um, experience how they can use their phones to uh, to, to use the hardware wallet so uh, in that time that we call our last generation product which is called the uh, Key, uh, Keystone 2 we call them that internally it is uh, uh, has a very big touch screens so user can um, see more information on the screen and we introduce the uh, fingerprint um, into the device so user can uh, sign the transactions and authorize the transactions by their fingerprints this kind of the experience is really uh, normal in the uh, in the, mo- uh, the, the mobile phones but actually they are uh, back to that time it is re- uh, really raw in the uh, Bitcoin community. So that is the reason we think that we can offer uh, a better uh, device, which is can be easy to use and meanwhile can keep uh, the security to uh, to to help the uh, Bitcoin community and help the average users can to 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 do the uh, self custody to keep their keys. So. I think that it will, uh, and we think that uh, that is the only way or we can help more and more users to do the self custody. To, yeah, that is basically how uh, everything started and how uh, in, uh, and why we would like to enter the space and provide uh, like a, uh, a new uh, hardware wallet into the market or into the Bitcoin community. Yeah, and it's a it's a great thing because we have to make uh, self custody more accessible. The yeah. the more uh, devices, the more solutions we have, the more options the consumer has, and the uh, more likely he is to actually enter and actually have a self custody solution. Because I see a lot of people yeah. don't even get to self custody; they leave it on exchange, yeah. they buy it somewhere yeah. on whatever Coinbase. Uh, Cracking whatever the bit uh, bit, uh, co- uh, the exchange is, and then leave it there. Um, let's talk about that. Like, why is the jump from the exchange to self custody so important? Like, what is for you the the main reason why people should take their own keys and not leave it on exchange? Yeah, actually, personally, I'm a, I call myself is a self custody maximalist. So no matter uh, what coins you manage, you should keep, uh, you, you should manage by yourselves. I truly believe uh, what is called not your keys, not your coins. So we know that the uh, Bitcoin is our 
like a solution for our current financial systems. So uh, that is my belief. It is the solution. I think that is the only solution to our breaking current breaking system, a uh, financial uh, financial system. So, if you leave your coins or your bitcoins into the exchange, you actually do not know how they manage them. So they say that uh, I own you like one bitcoin, but does it actually exist? I'm quite a uh, question about that. So actually, there are a bunch of ways they can try to explain. Okay, we hold the funds, we hold the uh, coins, and um, and the regulate uh, regulators can regulate that and to keep them safe. But we all know that from previous experience, like the FTX, this kind of stuff, they can easily store your coins, your funds into other place. So the only way to to solve these problems is you keep it on your own hand. So that is the reason mm, I think that self custody on and it is really crucial when we talk about Bitcoin communities. Um, personally, I'm uh, so I talk to every uh, friend um, and to every friend. So if you want truly own like a Bitcoin, you. You you can buy it on the uh, exchange, but after that, just get the coins out of the exchange and to your uh, to your own wallet. No matter it is a software wallet or it's a hardware wallet, uh, but I think that 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 is the step one. You truly understand what is bitcoins and why and so if you just keep the coins into the exchange. I say that you are not truly understand what is Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. Because when you only have it on exchange, you understand the number grab technology, but not the freedom grab technology. Uh, and you might yeah. get rug pulled. Uh, you might get something like an FTX or something like that. There are so many examples in the past, like three, four, or five years, uh, how yeah. people lost their coins, and then like not even if if the exchange does not. Uh, go broke or it does not do something uh, funny it's so easy to get hacked just username mm -hmm. password yeah. uh, it's way easier to get hacked even with two fan two factor authentication uh with a cold wallet that you have on yourself uh, you don't connect it with the internet uh it's it's way way harder to be uh hacked um yeah for 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 the people uh, that are listening now, for me it's always like uh, when we have self custody, we have to look at different layers. Like some user that has a thousand euros or dollars in 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 Bitcoin in a self custody wallet, it's way different than someone has like hundred thousand or maybe even like ten million uh, euros to secure. Like let's talk a little bit. Like what do you recommend when like what is the amount where you like in on that amount you have to take a cold wallet a hardware wallet because it's also an, an investment so like if you just have 10 euros in bitcoin it probably does not make sense to buy like a 100 euros <laughs> a hardware wallet yeah. uh, like yeah. what is the amount where it makes sense to buy one and then is the amount where you have to level up with multi-signature is there anything above uh, like uh, when you have like a hundred thousand dollars or like a million in in, in bitcoin where do you see like those those layers and those different solutions? Yeah, so uh, that is what I call a uh, wish. Everyone, everyone in the Bitcoin community should set up their own like the wallet system to manage their Bitcoins. So uh, just like you said that uh, different people own different amount of Bitcoin. So if you just uh, own that li a little bit of us. Uh, Bitcoins, which is worth like uh, one hundred or two hundred dollars, I think that is enough. You can just use a software wallet, and you can choose the uh, like uh, the well-known software wallet, which is can be uh, which is should be must be open source. Uh, I I think that we can put the open source part uh, into later, and we can dive into that part. Uh, and like the blue wallet, if you want to uh, keep that on your cell phones. And if you um, own 
light uh I, I think 10 case uh worth of the uh USD uh, uh that amount of bitcoins I think that is a uh that is the entry point which is you would like to choose a hardware wallet because um the hardware wallets is really different with uh between uh with really different with the software wallet so the hardware wallet uh, usually that uh, that is are um, like the offline device which is you can keep your keys safely store that into the um uh, it, no, no, no matter it is have the secure elements or not, you can just put that put put the secret key, uh, your private keys into uh, that device. And basically, if you are not using that as uh, that device, you can keep the, uh, that at your home or your safe box or other places. So this will dramatically reduce the attack surface of. Uh, which is really uh, increase the security of your uh, of your bitcoins. So um, I, I I I think that the next steps. So generally speak, uh, generally speaking, and if you on to the another step. So let's say that you have uh, one million uh, US dollar worth of bitcoin. And I think that part you should uh, set up a more like uh, like uh, robotic systems, which is you can apply to the multisig, and you 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 probably will think about how you can um, how to, how you can safely uh, store your seed freeze. Probably you should consider the Shamir backup system, which is uh, usually called uh, sleep. Thirty nine, which is uh, generally speaking, it is just the uh, split your C phrase into uh, different uh, different pieces, and you can put that into the uh, into uh, different locations. And on probably on the uh, next part, you should uh, build like a more complex uh, complicated system to keep your funds. And on next level, probably uh, you are institutions, which is uh, you use the uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin to 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 do to do your business. So uh, at that part, probably the multisig is a must, and Shamir backup is a must, and choose the uh, different wallets, and choose the different software wallets or the hardware wallets to. Build, build up the whole wallet system for your institutions uh, it is really a, a must uh, really a must so di- different peoples will have different um, solutions for their Bitcoin commi- uh, B- Bitcoin uh, security um, and I think uh, first you should not leverage on that uh, on the exchange that the fundament, uh, f- fundamental points, and second, um, based on your current uh, volume of your Bitcoin, you can choose different options. So, and meanwhile, uh, I think for the individuals that uh, when they first enter the Bitcoin space, they probably uh, will find there are a bunch of new things should you learn. So. For example, so the, uh, what is what is a key? What is a private key? What does a private key a different uh, is different from uh, from the password? Why I should keep the uh, private key? So if I lose the private key, why my my Bitcoin is gone? So they should understand that. And from that point, you can start like uh, from this uh, from a software wallet, which is can give you. Really, um, good understandings or your experience to do the self custody, and with the time goes, and me, and also with the uh, with the uh, with the coins you have more, so probably you can choose uh, better um, solutions for keep your Bitcoin safe. So I think that for our average users, um. 
10K probably is our entry point to enter the hardware wallet uh, space. Yeah, definitely. It's a good amount that uh, if if, uh, if you have a thousand, a uh, ten thousand uh, in, in in Bitcoin, you definitely should have like look at uh, uh, a self custody hardware wallet yeah. device. Um, let's dive a little bit into the technical because you're the CTO of of, of the Keystone Wallet, uh, and then we never covered on the podcast like how does a hardware wallet like actually like uh, work. work? And how does okay. it keep the keep the the Bitcoin secure? And how does this all like uh, come into place? There's like secure elements involved. There's a lot of uh, moving parts. And let's like let's 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 approach it from a simple perspective. Like how does uh, hardware wallet in general work? And then how is like maybe the Keystone wallet uh, um, special with the secure elements and stuff like that? Yeah. So. Uh... Okay, so uh, I, I, first, uh, I think I will first jump into the hardware, uh, ge uh, the general parts of hardware wallet to explain how it works. And uh, from my perspective, how I can um, tell whether a hardware wallet is a good or not good. And then we can jump into the keystone part. So uh, I will talk about how we think, uh, how we design a good hardware wallet and uh, what is the difference, uh, difference between the Keystone hardware wallet and, uh, and others. So for the first part, uh, what is the hardware wallet? I, I think that uh, I previously uh, talked with my friends to try to introduce the hardware wallet to them. So the, there are two main functions, I think, for the uh, hardware wallet. One is to securely store your private keys. That is, uh, that is one part. And the second part is that securely sign the transactions. So that is basically the two fundamentals in the hardware wallet. So we all know that uh, Bitcoin is safe and Bitcoin is, can bring the true freedom to the individual users. So how um, how to achieve that is um, every Bitcoins, every um, Satoshis, they are all stores on the uh, likes uh, on the private keys. So, uh, so um, how to say that? Uh, so, if you uh, if you uh, have your private keys, you can sign the transactions and take control of your Bitcoins. So uh, for the hardware wallets, the the first part of it is uh, quick is simply s store the private keys. So that is why the hardware wallets are all need like secure elements. So the secure elements is you can think that is our uh, our securely designed chip, which is usually. Um, you can store the uh, the secret information, secret data into that, and the secure elements. Uh, if it's well designed and well implemented, it can uh, prevent like the physical attack, uh, like the side channel attack, and these kind of attacks to uh, to uh, from the hackers. So even the hackers um, get your hardware wallet. They uh, they get the secure element and try to uh, it, uh, try to extract the data from the secure uh, element. Basically, it is really hard to achieve that if you are using our uh, secure elements. That is the um, points of the why a, a well designed hardware wallets uh, should have the secure uh, secure elements. So, if you are using a general purpose like the microcontroller unit and uh, you, you store the uh, sensitive data or your private keys into the flash so when the hacker uh, gets your hardware wallet it can like to retrieve this kind of information from the flash and try to break your private keys so we believe and uh, we think that uh, secure elements is the like the must from the hardware side to uh, for the hardware wallet. 
So the part, the meaning of it is that it is can securely store your private keys. Uh, that is the first part. And second part is that um, if you can, uh, if you would like to authorize uh, transactions into the, uh, if you would like to authorize the transactions, so you basically uh, will doing the um, signing stuff on the hardware wallet, which is uh, really important. So uh, that is the fun, uh, that is the second uh, fundamental part of the hardware wallet is how uh, the hardware wallet is using your private keys. So, um, and so, uh, for example, if I uh, would like to authorize the uh, Bitcoin transactions, the unsigned transaction data will some somehow to transmit that into the hardware wallet and the hardware wallet will decode that uh, data and display to the uh, to the user so they can verify um, the information so the from uh, if the from information uh, if the from address is right if the uh, destination address is right if the change address is your change address so if the amount is right it, it uh, if uh, the C is what you set, so every uh, piece of the info, uh, this kind of tra uh, transaction information should be honestly displayed in the hardware wallet and to make the user to confirm that. And after uh, after user confirm, the hardware wallet will using the private keys which is stored in the device and do the signing stuff. And give the signature back back to the uh, like no matter is a companion app or is the uh, uh, is our application uh, run on your computer or uh, uh, or other things that is uh, uh, we believe the second parts of the hardware wallets so it can truly understand and analyze what you would like to uh, what you would like to do. And show that information honestly and clearly to the user to make them understand what they are signing. So that uh, that is the second part. And uh, you can see that uh, during the whole uh, process, that your private keys will never um, out of the hardware wallet. So uh, so it will just uh, exist in your hardware wallet. And do all the stuff. That's the uh, meaning of why you should uh, using a hardware wallet. And excuse me. And compared to the software wallet, that's uh, that's the big difference. Uh, so in the software wallet, no matter is our uh, application run on your computer or is a application on your on your mobile. So uh, the private keys is always. On your computer or on, on your phones, so uh, technically speaking, it uh, the private keys is always connect uh, always connecting with the network, so that will be a huge attack uh, attack surface uh, for your private keys. So uh, the hardware wallet, what is really dramatically reduce that is that uh, attacking surface. So when you're using the hardware wallet. So uh, basically, it's just to store your private keys on the device, and the only uh, the the only time it can connect interact with other parties is when uh, it uh, signing the trans uh, transactions, and which uh, in this way is really uh, reduce the attack surface uh, of your private keys. So generally speaking, that is. Uh, how the hardware wallet uh, worked. So I will make a quick summary about that. First is it will uh, securely store your private keys basically in these secure, uh, secure elements. And the second part is that it will do uh, doing the signing stuff on this on the device and it will always show um, the information to users to make them confirm. So that is two fundamental parts uh, of the hardware wallet.
And back to Keystone and how we uh, think about that. Uh, in our currently, uh, in our last generation uh, device, which is Keystone 3 Pro, we have uh, three secure elements. Two is for storage and one is for the fingerprint process. So um, we combine the two secure elements together to secu uh, securely store your information, uh, your private keys into the uh, secure elements, that part one. And meanwhile, uh, we, you, you know that Keystone 3 have the finger, uh, fingerprint sensor on the device. So uh, your fingerprint uh, data, all these kind of uh, bio, <clears throat> uh, biosensitive data are also securely uh, stor uh, stored on the secured MCUs, which is do the uh, verification and uh, verification, uh, which is which is doing the uh, verification of your fingerprints. That's the whole point why we choose three uh, three uh, secure elements on our device, and meanwhile. Uh, for the signing part, I think we are probably the uh, the best the best um, user friendly devices in the market. So we have a large uh, dis uh, uh, displays which can uh, di which can display the uh, as much the information as possible to the users. And meanwhile, we do the uh, transaction decoding uh, on our like the uh, on our device to make the um, users can understand what they're actually signing. And mean, uh, meanwhile, the Keystone use the QR code for the data transmissions, so which is really uh, easy to use. And meanwhile, to reduce the uh, vulnerabilities of like other transmission protocol like uh, Bluetooth or a USB stuff. So that is basically the uh, the design thinking began, uh, behind the Keystone 3 hardware wallet and uh, what uh, what we are quite different uh, different with other hardware wallet. If you are listening to this podcast, you might be wondering what is actually the setup look like of Robin or how can I improve my Bitcoin setup? And there's two things. You have to buy Bitcoin from the right source and you have to store Bitcoin the right way. Let's focus on the first thing, how to buy Bitcoin. It's simple. Have a Bitcoin only exchange. Don't deal with the shitcoin exchanges. Don't deal with an exchange that has an own token or something like that. Be on a Bitcoin only exchange. I use 21 Bitcoin. 21 Bitcoin is for me the best partner for that. And now where do you store Bitcoin? Bitcoin should be stored on a hardware wallet, on a self-custody solution where you yourself hold your keys and it should be a cold wallet. So that's my simple solutions. That's a bit box. You just put your Bitcoin on there, back up your seed phrase, and you are better than 95% of all Bitcoin hodlers. If you have more than a thousand euros in Bitcoin, it's an absolutely must have. One last thing before we get back to the video. I'm really passionate about meeting other Bitcoiners. And there's an amazing opportunity in middle of Europe in June, the Bitcoin Prague conference. It's the best and biggest Bitcoin only conference in whole of Europe. For all Americans, please visit Europe and visit this place in June. For all Europe's, it's a must go anyways. You are so close to the Bitcoin Prague conference, you basically have to come. I will do interviews there and I would love to meet you all there. Use code ROBIN for all my sponsors to get discounts and use the links down in the description. That's uh, that's fascinating. Um, Usually in technology, when you design stuff, like uh, even with the Bitcoin base layer, uh, it's never perfect. Like uh, in the Bitcoin base layer, uh, we have to scale through layer technology because we have the small uh, block size so that we can uh, have security yeah. networks or the, the full nodes are not that, that big and stuff like that. Like there's always like trade-offs to technology. Is there, uh, when you design a hardware wallet, like the Keystone, is there any trade-offs you have to think of in the in the technology design? We are like, if I if if we in like, I don't know, uh, maybe like convenience versus security. Is there anything you thought of like 
we got uh, we went to this route with Keystone instead of this route because we think that is better. Like, is there any like uh, trade off uh, between anything that you can think of where you fall like in the design process? It's better to do it that way or that way or other uh, hardware wallets do it more like that way, and we do it like that way. I'm just like trying to figure out if there's like any fundamental um, uh, trade offs you have to make when designing a hardware wallet. Yeah, I think um, so. Uh, when you do something that is always, you should uh, do some trade off, like to deliver the products. And I think what we are doing is that we should, we always want to uh, make a good pr product to the end users. So uh, back to the Keystone uh, 3. And actually, um, so uh, I think the, the trade off we most made is that uh, we, um, we, we were, Actually, the Keystone 3 is not inherit, uh, inherit anything from our last generation product. So the biggest trade-off is that we build everything from scratch, I, I think, no matter is the hardware side or the uh, software side. So that is a really hard decision to make when we first, uh, when we first uh, uh, to decide to do that. Um, and the reason why we do that is, uh, um, is that uh, there are, previously there are a lot of feedback about our last generation product. So the last generation product is um, basically is the Android solutions. So we using the uh, Androids as the operation system, uh, which and we write up. Uh, applications which is running the um, uh, running the uh, ha uh, hardware uh, product logic and meanwhile we are uh, using uh, secure secure elements to running the uh, signing stuff in our last generations so when we launch the product uh, you, uh, a lot of feedback come uh, into uh, our teams and they say that the uh, Android play, uh, Android system is hard to understand and hard to audit, and um, and it is really hard to um, to do to uh, achieve the reproducible and verifiable um, firmware because the Android system code has like uh, I, I think that that is the forty or or sixty sub uh, repositories you 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 can never uh, always to do the whole um audit stuff by yourself and meanwhile the android uh, system probably will have some uh, underneath uh vulnerabilities that nobody knows so uh and but uh from the like the development side and from the um, from the user side, the Android system, which is can can be uh, really fast to uh, deliver, and meanwhile can provide a match uh, match better user experience to the end users. So back to our Keystone three product, and we decide to completely remove the Android. And so we uh, choose our security element. Uh, sorry, we, we choose our general purpose uh, micro uh, control unit uh, to uh, running the firmware. And meanwhile, we would like to achieve a better uh, user experience com compared to our la uh, last generations. So uh, we put a lot of uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put a lot of work and a lot of um, uh, we put a lot of uh, our development resource and a lot of work onto that and try to uh, provide a better uh, a better uh, user experience and which is can compare our last generations 
So yeah, uh, I, I think our current our current product um, it is good in uh, it is good compared with other uh, I'm, MCU based uh, hardware wallet, and but we have a lot of um, space can improve, and we will uh, we are also trying to um, make our like. Uh, uh, the user experience is uh, is better and much more better. So I think that is the uh, one big trade-off to make, which is we choose a completely new way to achieve the our Keystone 3. So we are, um, personally, I'm really proud we can uh, achieve that. And that that really cost a lot of our energy and our uh, our uh, work to make that happen and but uh, our current uh, design and our current um, uh, which is the new design uh, new new system design is really is much more focused on the security and simple uh, and simplicity uh, for uh, for the uh, hardware uh, wallet, so it is really easy to audit and really easy uh, to review. So I think that is uh, what the bi- the biggest benefits we achieve from the technical trade off. Yeah, that's uh, and I think it's an important step to uh, overthink like what are we doing and can we do it from scratch better. Uh, because if you just build on things that are already here, uh, you might run into problem that you have something that's down here and it's not working, and then you build on something that's not good. So like I, I really appreciate like that uh, the new approach and thinking something completely new. That's kind of what Bitcoin is doing to the financial world like right now, uh, because we know that the fiat monetary system is just not working as it is, and we are having like a completely new system that we are just now. Yeah building out and uh, we're really early in this uh, game and I I love the compar- comparison that you make um, at, for the end for the podcast I would like to uh, maybe get a little bit on the regulatory side also um, do you have any fear or any doubt in mind that like self custody might be uh, banned or might be under investigation <laughs> because you allow um, citizens to be sovereign uh, that is a really uh, good question. So we see uh, currently a lot of crazy things I, I think is happening, especially in our communities. We all know that uh, the Wasabi wallet is banned for the U.S. citizens and a lot of crazy stuff uh, from my perspective uh, is happening uh, into, uh, into, into the world currently. And and uh, as an engineer, as a, like a developer, from my perspective, uh, I, 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 I think that um, the tools are not guilty. So you cannot uh, blame uh, the people who create, create, uh, create the tools to help people to do the, um, to, to, to do the self-custody and to, do the, uh, to control their own destiny. So, but actually, there are a lot of regulations are doing, and and from from my thinking that um, our community or um, so uh, everyone in the community should have probably should have um, um, better communications with others, especially with the regulators or uh, other stuff. I think what you are doing is really uh, meaningful and re- really helpful to make everyone uh, in the world can uh, understand what is the Bitcoin, what is uh, what is the thinking, and what is the behind the Bitcoin is. So why Bitcoin matters, why self uh, custody matters, what problem of our current system, uh, and try to spread the. Uh, insight into them. So I think uh, with the efforts of the whole communities, uh, probably in, uh, sometimes 
um, people will know and um, much more people and more and more people will join this uh, movement and will uh, will understand that uh, what Bitcoin is. It is uh, what is try to uh, what it try to solve the problem. What the problem is actually is. So maybe the regula uh, regulators can understand uh, why the self custody matters and the, uh, what's the problem of the our current uh, system is. So, and I I'm personally I'm really um, I uh, I. I uh, think in the future, more and more people uh, will join into uh, this movement. They will truly understand what the self custody is, uh, what the Bitcoin is, and more and more people will understand that. Yeah, I definitely hope so. I mean, uh, the more self custody, uh, and I heard some crazy statistics like the most users on the Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, have their Bitcoin in uh, an exchange with a custodian, but the yeah. most yeah. Bitcoin, like the most value, the most purchasing power of Bitcoin is actually in self-custody. So like the, the purchasing power and uh, uh, the people that actually take care of the Bitcoin have the bigger power of sense of uh, purchasing power are in self-custody, um, but uh, the the exchange, like the the just the sheer amount of users have. Uh, so there's a lot of, there's a big market uh, for, for you basically <laughs> of, <laughs> of, of people that uh, need a, a self-custody solution, but they don't know it yet. Uh, and that's why I appreciate everyone that builds something in the space that has some uh, solution for Bitcoin in the space and develops something like you, you are putting your uh, money and your energy into the Bitcoin ecosystem. Uh, no matter it's, if it's developing a hardware wallet, if it's uh, being in Bitcoin exchange, being a podcaster, being an educator, whatever you're doing, you're contributing to the community. And I think this is what yeah. is important. The more and more people that do that, uh, the better it is. And even like if you don't work in Bitcoin, you can still uh, contribute in, in some sort of sense if you're working uh, where you can uh, buy it, you can uh, talk to the colleagues like there's always something you can do about it and, and, and contribute. Uh, and even if it's just watching this podcast, it actually contributes because this shows YouTube, okay, people are interested in it. And YouTube then distributes the podcast to more people. But like everything you do in the com a community is actually helping the community, which is yeah. Uh, yeah. amazing to see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, for the for the end of the podcast, uh, we before we end the podcast, I I want to get to know like you outside of Bitcoin and self custody and what you're doing Keystone. Uh, what are you really passionate about? Uh, what we did not touch on, like is is there anything that you're currently reading in or currently really passionate about a topic uh, that is not Bitcoin related, cryptocurrency related? Uh, I think for the uh, cryptos, uh, for the crypto space, which is I, uh, my currently uh, really a big interest uh, from my perspective is the Lightning Net uh, Lightning Network, and yeah, I I'm a Bitcoiner. So I would like to use my Bitcoin to purchase things and to to do all kinds of stuff into uh, yeah, but. But I, I think in the baseline, it is really achieved that. So the uh, so our currently uh, community system uh, solution is the Lightning uh, network. So the Lightning uh, for me is really uh, well designed and really smart. So uh, probably I will not jump into the technical details of uh, of Lightning. And I think what is Lightning doing and what is can be achieved is really important for the uh, not just for the Bitcoin community but also for the whole uh, crypto community or even for the uh, whole human can. So uh, and I was really uh, bullish about the Lightning Network. It's not just uh, for uh, I. I and meanwhile, I think that currently there are a lot of um, innovations hap uh, happening onto the uh, Lightning, Lightning network. There are 
people are thinking to issue the stable coins on the Lightning. So they can use like the USDs on, uh, in the Lightning network or do the purchase. I think that is the basically the really uh, interesting and the really um, can, uh, really um, big areas of our uh, Bitcoin communities and our crypto space. And with that, I, I think that the um, with the Lightning Network and with uh, the whole bunk, the whole things into that, uh, the the whole crypto space or the what we call the the uh, Web three world can really enter the uh, next area. So probably more and more people will enter the space and to uh, to to use the uh, our, our to use the blockchain and use the uh, crypto to into their uh, their daily life. And meanwhile, uh, I'm really, um, really my big another big interest currently is the uh, AI stuff. I think the, uh, the 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 machine learning and, and uh, the the AI stuff that really have uh, dramatics uh, dramatically involved in the recent years. Um, but currently during uh, my daily work, I use the TPD4 as my code uh, assistant to help me to do a bunch of stuff. And I, I so another uh, area I'm thinking the how we can comp uh, combine the uh, AI with the uh, blockchain or uh, Web3 together and how we can if there are any possibilities, we can, like, uh, make the AI agent can uh, do the stuff uh, with the cryptocurrencies. And uh, um, from my pers personal perspective, I think these two big areas can be an uh, intersection in some level. So uh, another uh, big interest of my, uh, my uh, another, my personal big interest is I try to explore uh, a lot of new things for the intersection between the AI and the blockchain stuff. So that that is basically the two things uh, I was thinking. And and uh, meanwhile, I think that uh, there are another things I try I'm trying to exploring uh, specifically for the Bitcoin community is, is the potential of the taproot. I think the taproot uh, stuff is really um, is really important for the Bitcoin community because uh, uh, with the taproot, basically you can do a lot of new stuff um, with the potential of uh, how the taproot can introduce. So that is our area I'm currently thinking. Uh, into uh, into the the Bitcoin involvement and the Bitcoin development, yeah. Uh, wonderful, and uh, I, I love it. And uh, I, I mean, there's there's one question I think I feel like I have to ask <laughs> uh, because we I have a Bitcoin kind of only podcast. I rarely invite people outside of the Bitcoin world. Uh, with hardware wallets, uh, it's it's more complicated because hardware wallets. All, almost always also include other cryptocurrencies. So I'll make a little exceptions there. Um, but what do you think of like altcoins? And uh, because a lot of Bitcoiners are like, okay, all the stuff that is currently in the altcoin market could maybe also be just built on top of Bitcoin. Uh, and then there's like this debate, is the altcoin market actually really decentralized? Is there not like a if the state actually is attacking some of the altcoins, uh, it could be probably shut down where Bitcoin actually have proven uh, the decentralization. Um, what, what do you think of like this this whole uh, altcoin versus Bitcoin and this uh, this debate? Or where do you see also the dominance from, from, from Bitcoin uh, going in the future? Okay. So uh, personally, I'm a Bitcoiner. So am I only... So I only have Bitcoin. I do not have any uh, uh, altcoins on my hand. So my true, my only belief and true belief is it uh, is Bitcoin. But uh, actually, I'm hard to call myself like the Bitcoin maximalist. 
I'm a Bitcoiner, and also I'm really uh, open to the uh, altcoin or general purpose uh, cryptocurrency space. So uh, I, I think that there are there are uh, there are a lot of uh, involved um, innovation ha- happens on uh, other uh, crypto space like the uh, like the uh, like the Ethereum, uh, like the Solana. They all have their um, pro. Uh, they all have their um, the reason why they exist. So um, I. Well, put some of my time to explore how these uh, altcoins evolve and how they uh, try to um, solve the problem and um, bring that thinking into my mind to 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 uh, to see um, whether uh, it is benefits for the Bitcoin or it is bullshit. So, um, but basically. Um, I, I think Bitcoin is the uh, is the store of value in the crypto space. So I think that uh, that one is uh, like no one can question. So a- a- everyone, basically everyone, uh, no matter you are uh, Ethereum maximalist or Solana maximalist, you are not questioning that Bitcoin is store of values, and. Uh, for the other crypto, uh, uh, for the other cryptocurrency projects, I'm well put some of my uh, insights onto them and try to understand uh, their underneath how the te- uh, how the uh, technical details into that space. So, probably from my perspective, if I see a, a project, um, maybe I will think, okay, this is not truly decentralized. And uh, maybe it has some um, some um, uh, some questions. I, I have some uh, doubts about that. But uh, I think uh, in the meanwhile, they can all they, they can also uh, bring some insights into the Bitcoin communities. So uh, probably we can learn something from uh, from it, or probably we can. Um, well, uh, we can get some insights from uh, from uh, from their perspective. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I feel, I feel like um, uh, when they have value over the long run, they will have some kind of a price, and they have some value. If they're proven to not have value over a long period of time, I'm talking like 10, 20 years, then they will go to yeah. zero. Like yeah. the free market will take care of that. Uh, I personally, like, just as like yourself, I only put my money in, in Bitcoin. And why? that's why I'm only talking about Bitcoin, because I only have money in Bitcoin. Like if, if I would have, mu- uh, if I don't have money uh, in, in Ethereum, I, I don't want to talk about Ethereum because that would yeah. be like weird if someone that not even has Ethereum talks about Bit- uh, Ethereum. So like, uh, that's why I'm focusing also on, on Bitcoin only. Uh, but of course, like I also don't see any value in like art for example like if, if so for some some painting that uh it looks like some some kid uh painted it yeah uh, uh yeah. and they're paying millions yeah. for it like yeah. uh, just, uh, just, uh, just like i really don't understand what the rft uh means uh actually uh i'm not involved i'm not uh, i'm really uh, not understand what the um, uh, these NFT project. So, but it, it uh, so the free market can decide its value of it. So, all, although my personal, uh, although myself can do not understand that, does not does also uh, do not mean that it is not have the uh, value to exist. So, yeah. 100% free market will will, will take care of that, and uh, as as the same with art. Um, we have an end routine where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest. And today it's a, an interesting one. Um, what question do you have for Robin? Like the previous guest asked what to you, what questions do you have for, for me? Uh, if, if you understood that. <laughs> um, so like, uh, what do you have a question for me, Aaron? <laughs> yeah. So 
which is your、uh, favorite hardware wallet? <laughs> <laughs> You're putting me on the spot. And why? And why? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, like, I try to uh,、um, avoid talking about、uh, what, like, what personal setup I have,、uh, and、okay. I have like,、uh, like,、uh, what, like, exact uh, uh, solution I have. I really like the Keystone wallet. Like, it、uh, has a touch screen, and when I gave it like、uh, to my、uh, girlfriend also because I have a Keystone wallet at home,、uh, she was like, she could do something with it. Uh, so that's like I think a, a huge bonus with it,、uh, like to have some touch screen on that, or at least like at least have a display. For me, it's like a, a harder wallet that does not have a display. It's not good. Like、uh, it at least has to have some kind of a display.、Uh, and for the the current sponsor of this、uh, podcast is the the、um, harder wallet that I usually recommend to、uh, especially new guys. And、uh, new people in the in the sphere, the bitbox,、uh, that got me started in the、uh, whole sphere. But once you have、m- a lot of uh, uh, more wealth in、uh, in the Bitcoin, com-、uh, in more wealth in in Bitcoin, you have to think of a lot of different things, anyways. Like you have to、yeah. uh, really have to be thoughtful of your security, especially like as myself when you are outspoken Bitcoiner,、uh, and that's for like four years straight. Uh, so when you're outspoken and in the public, and you're like the Bitcoin guy,、uh, then you have to take、uh, self custody to another level. And I always try to get all the insights I can I can get on all the different uh, wallets uh, uh, and uh, try out a lot of them. I think I have like seven wallets <laughs> at home that、uh, that that don't do anything. Like seven wallets that I don't use. I、just because I, I try to like、uh, okay how is this、uh, is that uh, uh, good uh, because also people ask me okay what what wallet do you prefer and I think like it's important that as I said in the beginning depending on what level you are on you need a different wallet so that is like、uh, is it easy to use、uh, how how is the how is the feel to it uh, and uh, then when you come to m- multi signature. Then you can try to combine different wallets. Like you can, yeah, you can, that is、uh, really important. Yeah, so, exactly.、Um, yeah, yeah. The, from the、uh, multi-sig perspective, I think、uh, choosing the different、uh, hardware wallet to work together is really crucial. So you cannot put all your、uh, if you are using the、uh, multi-sig, but you only choose like、uh, one kind of device. So. That is really、uh, that is not a good options to do that. So that is、uh, what we are thinking that、uh, Modisig is really、uh, the Modisig is really、uh, important for the Bitcoin communities. And meanwhile, if you would like to adopt the Modisig solutions, you should choose a different kind of hardware or wallet to work together to 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 do that. That can dramatically increase the security level. Up your modicity. Yeah,、uh, perfect. Yeah, this is exactly what what I'm also thinking. No matter if you have like two out of three, three out of five, four out of seven, whatever the the setup is,、um, try to have like multiple different、uh, kind of devices and try to like have、uh, the basic the basic thing that I'm always thinking is like try to think of attack vectors that、uh, mm-hmm. a hacker could attack you and delimit. All that you can delimit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's、uh, that's I think the the basic thing that、uh, you can can do, and there's a lot of things、uh, that you can do. But the best thing is、um, go out there and educate yourself. Like go onto the、yeah. Keystone、uh, Wallet website, see what they're all about. Go on other、uh, hardware wallet、uh, manufacturers, see what they're all about. Read reviews. Read.、Uh, From other people's opinion, try try to really、uh, grasp like、uh, what is the the good thing for me, and and that's what I basically try also do with the podcast. I do a podcast every day, and have、mm-hmm. a, a different guest on every day of the year,、uh, which is fascinating to see when、uh, there are so many different opinions on one topic. It's Bitcoin. Uh, yeah. There are so many different opinions、uh, on that, and I try to have like the widest range、uh, of of guests and、uh, opinions on on that one、uh, subject. And I hope 
I hope I do a good job for my watchers and viewers. Uh, time will tell if I get more subscribers and more watch time. People obviously like it. If I get less, people don't like it. Then I have to do something different. <laughs> so uh, fa thank you for everyone watching and subscribing. And thank you, Aaron, also for, for being on the show. I appreciate your time and your insights to, to the keys on hardware wallet, but also like generally to, to hardware wallets. Um, when people want to find out more about you, when people want to get in touch with you, ask you questions, uh, how can people uh, reach you? Yeah, uh, you, uh, you can get me on the uh, Twitter, which is uh, which is Aaron Chen, I, I think, and probably I will send the link to you. So, if you have any questions about the uh, Bitcoin wallet or the hardware wallet, and especially for the keystones, you can directly ping me. Or if you are developers, you are really interested uh, in uh, our project. And everything we are. Uh, so every line of our, uh, our code or we write is true, is fully open source. So you can uh, raise that issue. If you find anything uh, you would like to understand, you can raise that issue in our GitHub. And then meanwhile, you can d d directly s uh, send the message to me on Twitter. Yeah. DM is open. O open source is always great and i think it's almost like a basis like if you're not open source like uh, <laughs> yeah then you have so, to do something um perfect yeah. and thank you for being on aaron it was a pleasure yeah they're really happy to uh to talk about you and talk about the hardware wallet uh yeah it's really uh, uh thank you for the invitations <laughs>